Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're taking a first look at the Ryzen 9 3950X, or at least my first look on this particular processor. For those of you that don't already know, and if you don't know, then where have you been hiding for the last several months? But this is a 16 core 32 thread behemoth that works on the AM4 platform. Now I have an X370 motherboard here. It's been updated to the most recent BIOS, so it does fully support the 3950X. We have an Arctic liquid freezer 2 cooler here, which would be an excellent match for the Ryzen 3950X. And we do have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, which will be running at 3600 megahertz. So the test bench itself is looking really, really solid, except this is not the cooler that we're putting to the test right now. And we're really not even putting the 3950X itself to the test today. Instead, we're testing out Amazon's cheapest tower style cooler. This is the S83 from PC Cooler. It's a very descriptive name. This thing I was able to find and purchase it for around $13, though it's gone up a little bit in price. Still maintaining the crown, I believe, at least right now, as Amazon's cheapest tower style cooler, though obviously pricing does fluctuate. Check the links down below really for both of these things, but especially this cooler. Uh, let's take a look at this thing. Okay. Uh, some manuals and that sort of thing. And, oh, come on. Oh boy. So yeah, this is a, a little bit of a joke of a cooler. It's absolutely tiny as far as tower style coolers do go. And this is an 80 millimeter fan on top of uh, really this tower cooler that is advertised, by the way, actually on the Amazon page, a copper colored heatsink Though these are aluminum fins, that being said, it does look like we have a pair of direct contact copper heat pipes down below. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. The one saving grace I'm seeing from an airflow perspective is these fins are not overly close together. So airflow should actually be okay. The fan itself is yellow. I don't know why, because we have a copper colored heat sink, which by the way, is not actually copper colored. It, at least in person, looks a little bit more reddish than copper colored. We do have the copper colored heat pipes. We have the uh, silver here on the clamps themselves. We have the ketchup and mustard cable and a yellow fan with a black fan frame. Uh, really, there's the, the, the cooler does not look good and I'm apprehensive whether it can actually cool the 3950X because this is advertised as a 90 watt TDP cooler, which even at that I have some questions about. So I know that uh, the 3950X should actually scale fairly well with temperatures and sort of uh, use the clock speeds that's available to it based on the temperature we're getting out of it. So I'm not gonna blow anything up or anything, but I am very curious to see just how well the 3950X is able to hold a high clock speed with such what I would call an inadequate cooler. So really all that's left to do is to get the 1800X off of the test bench, get the 3950X installed with the little tower S83 cooler here and to uh, run it through some stress tests just to see how it performs under total load and to see if this cooler can actually hold its own against a 16 core 32 thread monster like the 3950X. So what's interesting about this cooler is it's actually not obnoxiously loud. Now, if we go over to our first test here, we are in IDA 64. We're just doing these CPU stress tests to start out because I do know that that's gonna put less temperature load on the CPU than doing the FPU test. But if we go down here, we are sitting right now at 81C and it's been sort of bumping up and down right around there for a while now. We are pinned at 100%. We haven't been quite going for 10 minutes here, but we are sort of at this point with this cooler not being overly large where we're fairly stable. Now, if we go over to CPU-Z here, we're running at 1.275 volts, have been for a while, bouncing around with precision boost overdrive right near that four gigahertz mark. And yeah, things seem to be pretty smooth out at this point. So I'm actually somewhat impressed right now with the CPU stress test. We are gonna go ahead and roll over into the FPU stress test. 
Now here we are with just the FPU test, which does, at least for Ida64, tend to put the maximum amount of temperature load onto a CPU. And we're sitting over here at 87 degrees Celsius, sort of bouncing between 87 and 88, which is quite toasty. Been at 100% now for just over 15 minutes. Now popping over to CPU-Z though, we see that we're just at 1.046 volts and our clock speed is down. Instead of up by four gigahertz, we're down to about 3.45 gigahertz. So the FPU test is definitely a little bit more than this cooler can handle, at least uh, keeping those clocks up at four gigahertz. And uh, yeah, these temperatures are quite high. So if you're running at a super uh, intensive load for a long period of time, this cooler over here is gonna struggle to cool such a uh, powerful processor with 16 cores and 32 threads. But if you're at any other load, like a gaming load or maybe just short bursts, then it's actually probably just gonna be just fine. So I've been running the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 here for a little bit now, about 22 minutes. And we see that we've stabilized right around 54 degrees Celsius over that now up to 22 and a half minute test. And over here on CPU Z, we're looking at 1.384 to 1.4 volts. And by the way, this is on the regular stress CPU test on Ida64. But what you'll notice is the clock speed has stabilized at about 4.15 gigahertz, which is a little bit higher than we saw over here with the extremely cheap uh, $15 tower cooler or so. So there is definitely an advantage to running a better cooler than the bare minimum with this Liquid Freezer 2 here over the PC cooler copper colored thing. Now moving over to the FPU test again after about, oh, 20 minutes, not quite 20 minutes, but we pretty much stabilized at 60 degrees, 59 degrees, uh, sort of bounces up and down. Going over here, we do get a slightly higher voltage with the better Arctic uh, Liquid Freezer 2 cooler at 1.1, and we're also seeing a higher clock speed. So once again, having the Liquid Freezer cooler does us some favors compared to the uh, PC cooler copper colored $15 tower cooler here. So to put all that information into an easier to digest chart here, we have the temperatures in degrees Celsius of all the tests that I just ran. And the sustained temperatures for the cheapo cooler were 82 degrees on the CPU stress test. And on the FPU stress test, we saw sustained temperatures of 87 degrees. Whereas the Liquid Freezer 2 AIO did much better seeing temperatures of 55 degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius in those same respective tests. Now voltages were much the same story here with that increase headroom that the liquid freezer 2 provided we also then got higher voltages which were needed to sustain slightly higher clocks so on the cheapo cooler side we saw a peak voltage of 1.275 volts on the CPU stress test or at least that seemed to be a consistent voltage and then 1.057 on the FPU test compared to 1.384 volts on the CPU test for the liquid freezer 2 and 1.112 volts on the FPU test and now we get to where the rubber really meets the road with the temperatures and voltages coming into play here. With the cheapo cooler, we saw sustained maximum clock speeds on the CPU test of just shy of 4,000 megahertz, and then on the FPU test just shy of 3,500 megahertz, whereas the Liquid Freezer 2 did with Precision Boost Overdrive give us a little bit higher clock speeds on both tests with 4167 megahertz on the CPU stress test and the FPU stress test seeing 3717 megahertz. So it is conclusion time for the S83 Tower Style Cooler, the cheapest Amazon Tower Style Cooler on the 3950X. And yeah, I wouldn't go this direction, but if you absolutely must, and maybe you completely maxed out your budget purchasing a 3950X, it will get you by for the short term, though especially if you're actually loading up all 16 cores for a long span of time, this thing is not gonna be adequate to keep your clock speeds all that high. Though if you're in a normal gaming load, actually it would probably hold its own just fine. And while you may see lower clock speeds than you would with a better cooler like the Liquid Freezer 2 cooler, it again will get you by. Now the 3950X is a little bit different than the other Ryzen mainstream processors right now in that it does not come with a cooler at all, whereas the Ryzen 3900X came with the Wraith 
Prism cooler. The other ones come with like the Wraith Stealth or Wraith Spire coolers. So you do need to provide a cooler. Uh, and on the AM4 platform, there are tons of options at this point, being that the socket has been around for a couple of years now, a couple few years, two and a half or something like that now. So there are just plenty of options. However, I would not skimp out on a $15 cooler when you're buying a $750 plus dollar CPU. So while it is possible and you can get by, I just would go with something better. So that is gonna be it for this one, but I do wanna know your thoughts down below. Let me know in those comments what cooler you would actually be pairing your 3950X if you were getting this CPU or any similarly high-end CPU, what cooler would you be pairing it with? If you liked the video, please give it a like, share, subscribe. If you loved it, definitely do hit that subscribe button, but also that bell notification icon down below. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.